South Africa's powerful trade federations have called for a national shutdown. The government is accused of failing to tackle unemployment and the rising cost of living. But will the mass action make a difference? And how will it impact the already struggling economy? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Tom McRae. Thousands of South Africans have joined a protest march organised by trade unions. They're frustrated by rising unemployment, increasing food and fuel costs and daily power outages. Rallies have taken place in all provinces, with the largest in Cape Town and the capital, Pretoria. Two powerful trade federations had called for a total shutdown of the economy, demanding a government cap on fuel, a stable electricity supply and a basic minimum wage. We'll bring in our guests in a moment, but first Al Jazeera's Fermita Miller has more from Pretoria. A few thousand workers have come out to Pretoria, the capital city of South Africa, to protest against the high cost of living. There are a number of different unions here, but the common thread amongst them all is just how expensive it is to live in South Africa. And that's especially after the COVID-19 pandemic, where thousands of jobs were lost uh, and people with, were without an income. Now, while the government has put in place a very basic benefit of about $20 a month for those who don't have jobs, it simply isn't enough, especially especially for the working class who say they can't afford the escalating cost of electricity, food, which has gone up at least 10% over the last year, as well as the poor transportation and also, again, the high cost of that. Now, they say they want immediate attention from the government, who they say hasn't done enough to address some of these major concerns, especially amongst the working class and the poor. Inflation has gone up uh, by 7.8%, the highest in, the, in 13 years. And so for many South Africans, it really is a struggle to survive day to day. Famida Miller, Al Jazeera for Inside Story, Pretoria. Well, let's have a closer look at the situation in South Africa. The economy has been stagnant since the 2008 financial crisis. It's deteriorated further due to the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Inflation hit a 13-year high in June, mainly driven by rising food and fuel costs. Last year, unemployment hit a record 35%. Now, the figure is even higher if it includes the number of jobless people who have stopped looking for work. Women are among the most vulnerable. Nearly one in every two women doesn't have an income. Well, let's bring in our guests. In Durban is Becky and Charlie Charlie, General Secretary of the Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSATU. In Pretoria is Yanni Rousseau, economist and visiting professor at Witts Business School. And going back to Durban is Dakota Lewete, the national spokesman of the African National Congress. A warm welcome to you all. Thank you very much for being on uh, Inside Story. Uh, let's start with you, Becky, as you call for the strike action. Has it been a success and uh, is this just going to be the first of many? Thank you very much. It has been a, a very successful. Uh, you look at the numbers, you look to the, the impact of the strikes in many of the towns in which we're marching, shops were closed. But this strike, this is a protest action in the main. It's intended to raise the issues and to get the society uh, debating and discussing the problem that they are facing and hopefully government will then respond to the crisis that we are having. Uh, so we raise the crisis, 10 million of unemployed people, 17 million on social grant, 10 million on a 350 grant a month, uh, the electricity problems, the young people unemployed, gender-based violence is uh, going uh, beyond proportions. So we hope that with this action, which was a peaceful, workers were joined by other uh, people in the society raising the same voice about the problem. So we think the message has been driven home. So we can say it's successful. OK, Dakota, has the message been driven home? Have, have you, the ANC, have you got the message? Indeed, uh, we've got the message as the African National Congress and uh, 
issues which are raised by the workers are well appreciated. You know that uh, in our country, in line with our practice as a constitutional democracy, workers have a right to strike, have a right to protest or demonstrate, and they've exercised that particular right which is enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic in terms of Chapter 2 of our Constitution. And I think issues that they are raising are issues that are of serious uh, concern for us as the governing party, in particular issues related to the cost of living, uh, in particular the issue related to unemployment, in particular issues related to energy security, gender-based violence, and general safety in our country are issues that we also, as the African National Congress, take it at heart. And I think it's incumbent upon us as the governing party to take them up with the authorities because we need to respond uh, to our workers. But so far, with the latest statistics from the job survey yesterday of Statistics South Africa, uh, we've shown a, a small decline of 3% from 39% of unemployment rate. Now we are standing at 36 percent, but it's still not positive given the numbers that went down or to unemployment as a result of COVID-19, but uh, as a result also of a sluggish economy. And I think it's incumbent upon us as the government party, as COSATU, as the private sector to finalize our social compact and find the best way uh, for all of us as a nation to win. Because where we are now, we are not in a good position. No, I think uh, most people would agree with that. Yanni Rousseau, I'll bring you in now. What econo economic impact does a strike like this have? And as we've heard the unions say, more are planned. So what effect will, will that have if, if they do carry on having more strikes like these? Well, a strike of any sort in any economy raises the cost of employment of labour, makes it more important. Uh, uh, expensive to employ people. So as a result of strategic action like this, employers will try to find ways to replace workers with uh, capital. And this is especially true in the midst of a fourth industrial revolution where new technologies are developed all the time that can replace workers. So from that perspective, a strike is really not helping the plight of the unemployed. I do agree that South Africa is in a serious crisis. We need higher economic growth to find employment for our people. The two things that the ANC government cannot do and that we urgently need in South Africa is to fix ESCOM. There will be no investment until such time as we have uninterrupted power supply. And secondly, fix the municipalities. We need service delivery from our municipalities. But this ANC government has no will to serve the people, as we've seen after a decade of corruption and state capture. And this is the price that ordinary South Africans have paid for the mess that the ANC government has made in South Africa. OK, Dakota, what's your response to that? Is this your mess? Look, uh, with all the challenges that we have, I think it's uh, uh, disingenuous to say that the ANC messed up the economy. You would understand when we took over in 94, we took over with the understanding that all of us will embark on a social compact, who are bringing a reconciliation, and we want capital to reinvest in the economy, which has not been the case. Uh, with what happened, we have said to recover and recoup all monies which uh, we lost through corruption, but equally we still expect the private sector to bring their part, which has not been happening, uh, particularly in terms of reinvesting in the economy. You would know that in this economy, there is over six trillion rand that is underutilized by private sector, which they are not even uh, willing uh, to invest back into the economy. There is an investment boycott, which is undeclared, but which is aimed at sabotaging uh, the governing party and the economy. And I don't think that is in the best interest of anybody it would be important that all of us uh, put our heads together uh, and embark on a social compact to ensure that we, we, we get our, uh, our country back uh, to where it's supposed to be. Any blame game 
will not help anybody. It's like me saying that I'm poor today because of those who colonize or, or those who are responsible for apartheid. It will not assist. What we need to work on is how do we build the future and reshape the country for the big benefit of our children and those who will come after us. Okay, moving on from who's responsible to how do we go about fixing some of these problems. You know, we've, we've heard uh, low wages, unemployment, inflation, the high cost of petrol and food. Becky, can you lay out exactly what it is you want the government to do now? Our demands are both in government and, and, and business. We want, it, we want business to stop the investment strikes. We want them to, re, I mean, to mobilise resources and invest back to the economy. We want what they call it the investment uh, impact. So we want business to, to do that. From government, we want them to uh, amend the Regulation 28, which allows the provident funds of workers to invest in, on social development, on issues that uh, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. But we want ESCOM to, f I mean, we want government to fix ESCOM because it's true that without energy security supply, you are not going to get uh, uh, any foreign investors coming at home. But it's also in the interest of the local business people to invest in ESCOM because you will be difficult for ESCOM because it's a coal-fired power station to be able to attract investment internationally because people will say, we can't invest in coal power uh, uh, fire station. So it must be a business, local business, domestic business that must be invest. Government has to deal with corruption. Uh, we, we agree that some of the issues are issues of the past regime, the apartheid regime, but corruption is not uh, the question of trying to, to privatize the state on enterprises that was even built by the apartheid uh, state is not, is, is, is an issue that is arising from how the ANC government has been raising some of these issues. So immediately what we want, want them to fix Transnet so that we can be able to transport goods from the production line to the, to the harbor and be able to export. So there are issues that uh, government can do immediately. It may not give all the results to employ 10 million people, but it has to be done, it has to be done immediately. The issues of uh, uh, for, IR, for IR, we have debated. This is the fourth. I mean, in technology has been all the times coming up in dealing with those issues. We know, we've discussed this thing in the International Labor Organization. Technology is not going to be a consumer. You can produce some things through technology, but somebody, somewhere, a human being, should be able to buy that product. And for that human being to be able to buy that product, that human being must be employed. There will be social instability. So FIR is not going to save our country and is not going to save our economy if we're going to be just using the intimidation, we're going to be bringing FIR, therefore worker must start. We know that when workers are getting better salary, they are able to consume the goods that the business will produce. So it's not just a one way that you increase the wages and people are taking money and put it under bed. People are putting the money back to the economy. There are advanced capitalist countries that they are using this technology, but their unemployment rate is very, very low. It's not over 40% or 35 percent using the narrow definition. Okay, Yanni, just on this, in your opinion, how has the economy been mismanaged? Is this primarily the government's fault or is it because of external factors that have been outside its control? That's the fault of the ANC government. I have no doubt in my mind about it. The ANC government is corrupt. It's corrupt to its core. We've had a very corrupt Zuma administration. Uh, I've advised eight years ago that the ANC government should get rid of the National Airline uh, SAA. It is now eight years later, 30 billion rands later, divesting of half of the airline. So the government also does not take good advice. I have another bit of advice for the government in terms of the electricity problems at ESCOM. Just publish every ESCOM contract 
for public scrutiny. And we will know exactly what's going wrong, and we will know exactly how to fix it. However, this government lacks the will to change its own activities. The corruption is entrenched in the ANC government, and therefore the people are suffering a lack of service delivery. And incidentally, investment in this country will not take place if ESCOM cannot guarantee uninterrupted electricity supply. So start with ESCOM, publish all their contracts for public scrutiny. There's no reason why it should be a secret. And while we're on this topic, the ANC can also answer the question, why not publish all contracts of all government departments and all provincial government departments for public scrutiny? After all, it is our tax money. Only once we have full transparency, we will be able to fix this country. But I would like to hear the ANC on publishing of contracts. Please, Tom. OK, Dakota, is that something that your government is prepared to do, publish those contracts? Look, uh, the issue of publishing contracts, it has never been a difficult uh, matter for the ANC. We have what we call the Paya Act, Public Information Access Act, which allows every citizen to can even petition through the court any information on any uh, state dealings. And, and, and that's what the law allows in this country. I don't understand why Mr. Rousseau would not want to follow that particular process, which gives him access to that particular uh, information that he requires. But also, he can do that by petitioning the court to get that particular information, which is not supposed to be difficult. And that's why today we have uh, the, the Commission on State of Capture we have uh, Public Access Information Act and all other legislations which allows uh, transparency in government. And, and look, I don't see any difficulty if uh, government can be persuaded through a proper legislation or regulation that it must make everything uh, uh, accessible and every information transparent because after all, is the taxpayer's money that is uh, sustaining the state. And, and even taxpayer would want to know how their money and uh, within the value chain of uh, their relationship with their government. That is not supposed to be difficult. Look, corruption is not a, an ANC position. ANC were very clear and resolute that we, we don't stand for corruption. We stand to ensure that uh, we give a better life to all our people. There are individual elements within the ANC who have made it their business. And so far, we are succeeding to deal with them as the African National Congress, including some in the government. Some are already serving jail terms. Some are already uh, in court. Uh, others are just waiting to be charged. So there is a turnaround that is happening, and it's happening for the good. So the issue that there is no political will from our side to deal with these matters is neither here nor there, but uh, something an election has been taken. It's no, there is no secret that we are hiding away from our people. All the reports are there. You can go even to the Zondo Commission report on state of capture. Individuals, people are named with recommendations, clear of what needs to be done. So there's nothing that we're hiding from the people. We are also feeling the pinch uh, of uh, what is happening. And I don't think it's good for us. And it's, it can be good for any South Africa. I think we need to do more, all of us, and that's why we want the commitment from the private sector and, uh, and those who own the commanding heights of the economy. Because, to be honest, we are the governing party in this country, but we are not char in charge of the commanding heights of the economy. The commanding heights of the economy are still in what we used to call the colonial structure of the economy, where minorities are in charge of trillions and billions of rents in our country. And I'm just, I just made you an example for you that there is an investment we called we have over six trillion rand in the value chain that is underutilized. So we are asking also equally from the private sector that to reinvest the money. We don't have to run it as government. You can run it as the private sector, but help us through a social contract to rebuild our economy, to get our economy to recover from the current sluggish growth that we are experiencing. Because it's not only to the detriment of the indigents and the poor, it's also to the detriment of your capital because business exists to maximize profit.
Okay, just focusing on the power crisis uh, in South Africa at the moment, rolling blackouts sometimes for up to six hours a day in places. Uh, it's been described as a winter of discontent, obviously having a severe effect on the economy and uh, could even last for uh, another two or three years. Becky, just how bad is it and how devastating has it been to the economy and the workers that obviously it supports? <laughs> Thank you very much for the question. Uh, first, I just want to uh, reiterate maybe the point that made that uh, corruption in South Africa is not only the, the politicians, but also the private sector. They are deeply involved in corruption. So let's, let's accept that uh, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. Private sectors is involved in corruption. We've seen it through the Zondo Commission. In regard to your question, I think it's devastating. Uh, the the question of uh, this load shedding, stoppage and timing, and et cetera, and et cetera. And we understand, because we have met with uh, the management, top management of ESCOM and understand the problems. And they said, look, you can stop load shedding now, maybe for 12 months or so, but what we'll have then thereafter will be a total shutdown. Because if you are not giving uh, space for maintenance on some of this unit, you are just going for a disaster. And they are trying to manage a very terrible and slow processes because the renewable uh, energy, the question of the IPP and the one that uh, private sector tend to, to establish is not going to happen in the next six months or so. It's going to take maybe 12, I mean, 12 months to 36 months in dealing with those. So it's something that we have to, to live with it unless government, as they promise, they are going to look to the procurement processes. Because one of the problems ESCO management is saying that following the, the processes in, in, in procuring in, in ESCO, it takes for a very, very long time. By the time you receive the, the parts that you wanted, many other parts will be uh, affected in dealing with those issues. So if government can come up, bring ESCOM on board and everybody on board and deal with this issue, I think we can uh, mitigate some of these processes while we're trying to find a lasting solution. But it's devastating. Okay. Yanni, I just want to finish with you briefly here. Uh, on unemployment, obviously, you know, at record highs, why can't South Africa's economy match the demands or availability of that workforce? I mean, you've got very high unemployment, but also a youth unemployment, but a really highly educated one. What is the main issue there? For South Africa's unemployment situation is a crisis. It's a national crisis, and unfortunately, people suffer as a result of this national crisis. And we will have a growing unemployment problem for as long as the population growth rate is higher than the economic growth rate. Our population growth grows at about 1.5% uh, per annum. Our economy has been in a low growth trap as a result of corruption in the ANC government, as I stressed before. And with population growth higher than economic growth, our unemployment problem will grow. It will not become smaller. The economy will not grow until such time as we have electricity from ESCOM and service delivery mm. and municipal government. Obviously, uh, a range of issues that uh, clearly are going to take some time uh, to solve. I just want to thank uh, all three of our guests, Becky and Chali Chali, Yanni Rousseau and Dakota Lewete. Thank you so much for coming on the programme. Well, thank you also for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Tom McRae, and the whole team here, bye for now.